Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you the convenience of reference layers in Clip Studio Paint. Really, I recommend everyone who uses the software to get accustomed to that neat feature. It makes certain workflows much easier. Alright, so first of all, here is how you set your layers as reference layers. Select the layer you want and click that little lighthouse icon in the menu above the layers. At least I think it's supposed to be a lighthouse, not quite sure. Alternatively, you can right-click on the layer, go to Layer Settings and select Set as Reference Layer. You can also select more than just one layer as reference layer. Just hold Ctrl and left-click on the specific layers you want. Or hold Shift and select all the layers between the one you selected and the one you clicked on. Not just normal layers can be set as reference layers, but any kind of layer, except for correction layers. So that includes vector layers, 3D layers and even entire folders. Ok, so now onto to the more interesting part. Let's actually make use of those reference layers. One of the most common and convenient uses for them is to fill out line art. You can use Clip Studio Paint's fill tools to do this very quickly and easily. Usually you set the line art layer as reference layer, select the layer you want to fill in with paint, which is below the line art layer, and make sure that in the fill tool settings, refer multiple is set to reference layer. This will tell the program to look at the reference layer when using the tool, even though you don't have it selected right now. You can also exclude the editing layer, which is the layer you have selected, and there are other exclusion options too. This way you can truly make sure that only the reference layer is referred to and no other layer. After that just fill out everything. Super easy. Also, not just a regular fill tool can make use of reference layers, but all of them. They all have the same refer multiple options. By the way, if you want to know more about the other options like area scaling, tolerance, close gap, anti-aliasing and so on, then check out my other video about filling in line art where I explain all of them in detail. I made sure to make it as thorough as possible. So even though reference layers are mostly used for making it easier to fill in lines, it can of course be useful for other kinds of purposes. For example, I have this 3D model here and set it as reference layer. The outlines of the model are turned off. I put a normal layer above it, choose the regular fill tool and click right into the shadowy part of it. And as a result, I immediately get a neat looking solid shape. The tolerance value determines how much gets filled in. Reference layers can be useful in many different ways, as you can see. Next up the auto select, another convenient tool, which also has the option to refer to reference layers. Let me show you a way how that could come in handy. So I have this other drawing here, just the lines drawn on a vector layer. But this time I want to use brushes instead of the fill tools to fill out everything. Of course we are going to paint on a separate layer again. Now if you have the refer multiple option turned off, it only looks at the layer you currently have selected. This means you would always have to click on the line layer, make your selection and then go back to your color layer. That would be a bit annoying. And if you had refer multiple turned on but set to all layers, then it would only work if you don't have too much else going on on your canvas. Maybe you already have a background or some textures or you did the shading at first. That would mean that it would also look at those pixels, unless you have specifically excluded them or turned those layers off. Well, it's much easier to simply set your line art layer as reference layer and then you wouldn't have to worry about any of that. Whatever other layers you have above or below, it doesn't matter. I make my selections and paint away and I always nicely stay within the lines. Since those lines are actually vector lines, I can turn on fill up to vector path and then the texture of the lines doesn't matter anymore. This makes this whole process even easier. Also, if you want to add more areas to select at the same time, hold shift and the cursor gets a little plus. When you click into another area, it will also select it. Or when the areas are adjacent to each other, just hold left click and drag the cursor across the areas you want. Alternatively, you can also remove areas the same way by holding the ALT key. This isn't the only way to make sure your brushes don't paint over the line art though. Every brush has an option called Do not cross lines of reference layer. If it's not right here in the tool properties, then you can find it in the subtool detail menu by clicking the little wrench in the lower right corner. 
go to anti-overflow and there you can find it. If you want it to show up in your tool properties, click the box to the left to make this eye appear. The basic function is pretty straightforward. If you have it activated, then the paint of your brush simply stops when it encounters some pixels on the reference layer. You can fine tune it with these other settings right below. Again, if you want to learn more about these, please watch my other tutorial video about filling in lines. So it's pretty straightforward. Just set the line layer as reference layer and paint away on your color layer. Now there are some specifics to this feature that you need to consider. First of all, the center of the brush needs to be inside the area that you want to paint in. If that center dot goes over the lines, then the paint will switch sides. Also, if you encounter a line that abruptly stops, you need to be careful. If the brush size goes over the end of the line, then the paint will flow around it. Keep in mind that it is not the maximum brush size that matters, like the circle around the cursor indicates. It is the active brush size. So if you have a brush with pressure sensitivity, the paint will only overflow if the current brush size hits the end of the line. Look closely. The circle has long gone over the line, but only when the paint actually reaches the end, it overflows. So this option is very useful. You don't have to make selections as before, just go ahead and paint right away. You only need to be careful to stay inside the lines with your brush. Alright, on to the next one, which is Contour Line Paint. It's also referred to as Free Flow Gradient. Honestly, I like the term Free Flow Gradient way more. It is a neat tool for quickly creating gradients with more complex shapes than the normal gradient tool could ever achieve. I think it's a more unknown tool, so let me show you how it works before the reference layers come into play. It might seem confusing at first, but it's actually not that complicated. First of all, we need to draw some lines. I recommend a thin, solid brush with a constant brush size. Anti-aliasing needs to be turned off so that it will only paint completely opaque pixels. If you zoom in, it looks quite jagged. That is totally fine. Now we draw some lines, and those will be the borders of the gradients that we later fill in. Let me quickly demonstrate how it looks like. After I'm done with the lines, I switch over to the Contour Line Paint tool and simply click right into those areas between the lines. You can see that some gradients have been created. So what exactly happened? Let me superimpose the original lines over this gradient to make things clearer. So first of all, the corners were filled in with just one solid color because they were only connected with one type of color. The borders of the canvas don't count as color and so the tool only received one color as information and filled everything in with that one color. However, more interestingly, it created those gradients in between. In those cases, it actually had two colors as borders, and so it painted gradients from one line border to another. How exactly the gradient is drawn can be adjusted in the output settings. If those lines have gaps, you can automatically close them with the Close Gap option and the tolerance determines how many pixels that are similar to the one you clicked on get filled in. The black and transparent color options pretty much do what they say. You can usually leave those at their default settings. Now let's finally get to the part that is the most relevant to this video. As you can see, it also has a refer multiple option, including reference layer. Let me switch to this cheetah drawing. Now once again I will set the lines of this drawing as reference layer and the tool will then treat those lines exactly like it did the borders of the canvas in the previous example. That means it will stop filling in those gradients at those lines. The coat of the cheetahs doesn't have just one singular color. Areas like the chest, the belly or the snout are lighter than others. With the help of the contour line paint tool, I can very quickly create some of those color gradients of the fur. I work with only one color after another, instead of constantly switching back and forth. First of all, I outline all of those areas that are supposed to be white. I give it some shakiness so that it will look a bit more natural at the end. Then I draw in the light brown color. The distance between those lines will determine how wide those gradients are going to be. And don't forget, if an area only has access to one color, then it will just fill it in with that one color. For example, I just draw some small dots into those eyes with some yellow. Now when I switch to our neat contour line paint tool, I click into those eyes and they are fully filled in. The rest get filled in too. 
you can speed it up by holding left click and dragging the cursor over the areas. And the end result is actually not too bad, especially considering how little time I spent making this. Well, this tool has some limitations of course. Fine details are more difficult with it, so you might need to do some detail work afterwards with some other tools. But it can give you some quick colors to work with. There is one more feature that I found that makes use of reference layers, at least that I know of. It is another one that is less known, probably even less than the previous tool. So once again the lines are set as reference layer. This time only one single layer can be set as such. And then go to Edit, Colorize Technology Preview and Colorize All. A window will pop up informing you that your image will be sent to Clip Studio, but only temporarily and without any personal information. Click OK and wait a bit for it to process. There you go, you get some immediate results. It made the color layer above the reference layer filling out the entire canvas. Some in between areas I would need to erase, like here the crossbow, but for the most part it did a decent job at filling in the entire drawing. If you want to have more control over the colors, make a layer below the lines and very roughly fill in some colors. Seriously, don't even try doing anything more detailed, the colorizing is too blurry for details. Going over the lines is totally fine too. Then go to the same menu, but this time click on Use Hint Image and Colorize. Make sure the layer with the colors, which is supposed to be the hint layer, is selected. It will then make an image roughly based on the colors you filled in. If you want to have a bit more control, you can click on Use More Advanced Settings. It will give you some control sliders to alter the results. I'm not gonna go into detail about those options, since in this video I just want to introduce those features to you. Feel free to play around with them. So yeah, it can be convenient if you want some super quick rough colors. But don't expect it to do anything more than that. Colorizing algorithms are still very limited. It's a neat gimmick, and maybe they will develop it further in the future. But honestly, I'm kind of glad that AIs haven't fully replaced us artists. Yet. So, reference layers have a pretty wide range of uses. I'm very glad that they are featuring this app. They saved me a good amount of time. If there is another tool that uses reference layers that I did not show in this video, please let us know in the comments. Or if you want to share another unique method of using them, then that would be also very appreciated. Alright then, thank you a lot for watching, and have fun drawing!